Hey guys, it's Angry Admin here, and today I will tell you a story how I lost my vCenter server. But thankfully, I recovered it. And I tell you what to do in the situation like my one. But before we jump to the subject, I need to give you a bigger picture what was going on and why it happened that my vCenter server got lost. Let's start. So the long story short, uh, my network team was doing the hardware refresh and I need to re-IP vCenter. And I have the management cluster, which contains three ESXi hosts. And my vCenter is one of those hosts. It was the host ESXi2 at angrysysops.com. In my environment, I'm running the distributed v 2 switches with the port groups and in order to re-IP, we create another v 2 distributed switch with the new IP and the new pod groups. And I have physically four NICs connected. So two in the old one, old network, and the two for the new network. In order to re-IP the center, I need to just change new pod group. It's simply as that and give a new IP. However, if I change a pod group, how can I access that vCenter? This is the question. So let's give you an example. So let's say my old IP is 10.2.10.10 and I need to re-IP to 10.5.10.10. So if I change the pod group and I leave the old address, I will lose the vCenter. So I need to have a connectivity from the other VM to access vCenter on layer two. So what I did is I went to print server. The print server is a different cluster. It's in the production cluster. So in the production cluster, I have like a 40 odd hosts. And I went to the print server, I added settings and I add another NIC. I put the NIC in the same pod group as new vCenter IP will be. And I log in, I add the P to the, uh, to the print server and I gave the IP of vCenter server subnet. So to summarize, um, the print server and VCS uh, have the same IP address of 10.2 subnet and both of them, they have same pawn group 10.5 subnet. So although the pawn groups are different than IP addresses, they can talk through the layer too. So I went ahead and I went to the vCenter server VM and I changed port group over there. And of course, once I did that, I lost connectivity to vCenter. So I RDP back to the print server and opened the browser and I type in vCenter server address and nothing happened. Oh no! no. I tried to ping it and it was not pingable. So the option was either I made mistake and I didn't give the same pod group for both of them, for the print server and the center server, or I mix up the IPs. However, the center was gone and I could not reverse it that easily. So if that happens, guys, I, that's what you need to do. And as a quick side note, guys, um, the issue I was facing was caused by misconfiguration of ESXi host on which the print server was located at the time. Let's see how to get our vCenter back. First of all, it's good if you know on which host your vCenter server is located. So I knew it, uh, my vCenter is on the host ESX2. However, it's only three host clusters. So if I wouldn't know that there was no big deal as I could SSH to each of them and check it. However, if that would be my production cluster, which is over 40 hosts, that could be a headache. And especially if you add the time pressure to find that uh, VM could be challenging. Okay, so let's prepare to recover our vCenter. What we need to do, we need to SSH to the host which holds our vCenter server. Now, 
once we own that host, if you're using the lockdown mode, you have to unlock it and you have to restore standard switch. So I was hoping that on the version seven, VMware will make it easy. And once you log into the host through the GUI, through the URL, then you can change the pod groups. It was impossible on version six and I check it and it's not possible on the version seven. So you get the error message and you have to create standard switch. So you have to go to the iDRAC and through the iDRAC open KVM and log into DC UI. And what I notice in DC UI, there's few new options. Like you can now create standard switch and you can migrate your physical NIC. But to be on the safe note, I just went the old known road. I just went to restore standard switch because I know that if I use that option, my physical NIC will be moved automatically to the standard switch. And the next step is to go to troubleshooting options and restart management agents in order to see our standard switch. We have to do it, otherwise we will not see it through the GUI interface. Now we need to add new pod group to our standard switch. So we can put any name we want and we need to make sure it's a correct VLAN ID and click add. And we have our temporary pod group. In this case, now we can go back and change pod group from the pod group from VDS to our pod group on the standard switch. And we're doing this in the network adapter. You can see the temp group and we save. So once we have our vCenter back, now we can log in through the uh, VCSA URL and you can clean up. So we can put your vCenter to your, uh, so you can put the vCenter to proper pod group and then you can go to the host settings, network VM kernel and migrate VMK0 from vSwitch to your VDS. And that would be it for today. And I hope that was interesting for you. And I hope I could save you some stress if you will lose TV Center. Um, follow me on Facebook, uh, follow me on Twitter and read my blog. It's angrysysops.com and see you in the next one. Bye.